Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. I'm interrupt the Halloween videos to get back to some regular card making videos. I'll be jumping all over the place as usual. Um, today's cards are for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge, which was very primary colors, kind of back to school feeling. Um, I wasn't in the mood to make back to school cards, so instead I decided to make two more masculine themed cards. So I pulled out my favorite things, Get Down to Business stamp set, and I've got several of my acrylic blocks here, and I just pulled out all the images I wanted to use and put one image on each side of the acrylic block to make this all go faster. And then I had some Canson XL watercolor paper that I'd cut down to about four and a half by five and three quarters roughly. I wanted it a little bit bigger than an A2 sized card front because I wasn't 100% sure how I was going to do this. If I was going to cut it down to an actual actual A2 size card or a little bit smaller, I was giving myself that little extra wiggle room. So I've got all my images and I'm just stamping them onto the watercolor paper with VersaFine Onyx Black ink, just flipping you know, the stamp over, stamping these images to create kind of a random background. And my idea when I do backgrounds like this is I don't want two of the exact same image side by side. That's where this set was kind of perfect because there were so many images, I didn't even use all of them. And I was able to create this fun background. I ended up doing this twice. I did it a second time off camera. My original plan was to only make one card. And then I was like, I had another idea for another card in the back of my mind. I'm like, might as well do it all at once because I ain't got time to do two separately. <laughs> so once I'd stamped all the images, there's little paper clips in this set, which are so cute. So I stamped those to kind of fill in some of the blank spaces. And then once I was done with both of those, I'm just lightly taping them down to a masonite board with some painter's tape just to hold them in place. And then for the watercoloring, I'm using my Peerless watercolors. And at the end of the video, I will have a link to the video I did showing how I have these all cut up and organized. I'm just using like the basic beginner pack here because the, like I said, the color throw on challenge, it was basically for like the primary colors. Like it was red, yellow, green, and kind of a blue sort of a color. So this basic pack of Peerless is perfect because it's got all those colors. Plus it's got the black, which I wanted to use to create a gray. And then I just grabbed this, I've got this little cheapy palette um, in my stash. So I decided this time, this is something I've, I don't think I've ever really done with the Peerless, but is mix up colors like off of the palette. Usually I just pick up the color directly from those little Peerless papers and paint them on. That's just what, how I've always done it. But because I was gonna do a fair bit of watercoloring, I thought I would just mix up the color off to the side in the palette. And you see, you don't even really need that much. Like what I mixed up is enough for several projects really. So I can just let that dry though. And next time I use my palette, I can pick up the color from there and it'll be good to go. So I'm doing very messy watercolor. I've super, super sped this up just because I'm not doing anything fancy other than like messy watercolor, which I know it drives some people batty. <laughs> I like it. I don't know what it is. I've always, I see other people, you know, their finished creations and like the messy watercolor and I've always loved it. It's just something I've always struggled with. I've mentioned this in many videos because I like to kind of, you know, stay in the lines and keep it neat. And I find that look of messiness and yet not ugly. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but I just, I really like it. Plus I've said this before. Um, it makes things go a lot faster when you're not so OCD about it. So for the first one I did in color, and then my idea for the second one, I wanted to do more black and white. So I did a quick little wash of the gray, like really pale. And then I went over it while it was still wet with a bit of a more concentrated color and then let those completely dry. And then I pulled out my splatter cubby, which I have not been using hardly at all since I got it, but someone made a comment or emailed me or something asking about it. And I, I always forget I have this. And normally it doesn't work half the time because it's quite big. I showed this in a haul video and I can't remember if I showed it in any other videos, but it folds down. So the great thing about it is it folds down so it stays flat for storage, which is awesome. But when it's unfolded, it's quite large, but it's awesome for splatter because as a cubby, it keeps the splatter from getting everywhere. So now that I've kind of made a point of pulling it out this time, I think I'm going to start using it more um, because yeah, it just helps protect your work surface from getting completely covered, which you guys know me. I love my splatter. I make, I have splatter all over the place. It's such a mess. So this is great and the price point on this is awesome too. So it's all vinyl coated. So all you gotta do is wipe it down with a baby wipe. You can clean up the mess, you know, as much as you need. It doesn't need to be perfectly clean because that's the whole point of it. It's a splatter cubby. But yeah, if you've got, you know, paint or just, you know, a lot of wet substances on this, you can just quickly wipe it down with a baby wipe and it's good to go. And then yeah, if there's Velcro on the sides. It folds flat, You're, it's perfect really. So I just keep it stored under my desk and then now I can just pull it out when I want to use it. 
So I splattered both of these with some of the black watercolor and then I super sped up this part again just because I've shown this in a bajillion videos. I'm just stamping several of the sentiments from the set with Simon Says Clear Embossing Ink onto um, black cardstock and then onto some colors of cardstock and embossing everything with detail white embossing powder. Now this stamp set I absolutely love. Another reason I love it is because some of the sentiments are just perfect and I am cutting apart some of the sentiments here. That's another thing that you know gives people a heart attack. Trust me way back in the day when clear stamps first started coming out I kind of felt the same way but now I kind of like doing it this way. It just you know sometimes it's easier to use the stamps cut apart. Sometimes you only want a part of the sentiment or image or whatever and you can always butt them back up against each other to stamp all at once the way it was intended originally whatever floats your boat. But I cut all mine apart and then when I put them all back on the sheet they're as if they'd never been cut apart so I still have the options which is great. So I had stamped and embossed everything and then trimmed them all down with my paper trimmer. I wish I could move this fast in real life. I would get so much more done. <laughs> so trimmed everything down with my paper trimmer and then for my card base I just have a full sheet of eight and a half by eleven heavyweight white cardstock. And I score it first at the five and a half inch mark and then I turn it and I'm going to cut it in half at four and a quarter inches. So I've got both my card bases done at once. So they're four and a quarter by five and a half inch A2 top folding cards. I do get asked that a lot. Like do I do top folding or side folding? Like what's my reasoning? I don't know what it is. I prefer top folding cards for pretty much. I do that what 99.9% .9 of the time. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know. I just like them better. I have no reason for it. It's just what I do. So both cards at once, pulled up my splatter cubby a second time and covered the tops of both of the insides of these cards just with my um, blue chucks that I've been showing in recent videos. That's what I was using to clean off my brush in between the water coloring at the beginning. But I just covered the, in, the top of the insides because I didn't want the splatter all over. I wanted it a little more controlled on just the base of the insides of the card. And I did the exact same thing I did before with the black splatter, but this time I just used the four colors of the color challenge and just splattered that onto the insides of the cards just to give it something. And then I was thinking, especially for the second card, because it's a birthday card, um, it made me think of confetti. <laughs> so it was fun. So once I was done all that, just set everything aside to dry again, um, I ran those watercolor panels through my Big Shot and I just used the largest die from my favorite things, Blueprints 25 Dynamics. This cuts an A2 sized die cut, so four and a quarter by five and a half, along with um, a stitched border all around the edge. So it just gives it that little extra something. So I die cut both of those with that. And then all these sentiments, I'm gonna start adhering with some foam tape. So the colored background, I did the sentiments um, on black cardstock. And then for the black and white background, I did all those sentiments on color cardstock in the colors of the challenge. So I'm just using several, I'd use several different My Favorite Things um, scraps of colored cardstock for this. And that's why I'd cut the stamps apart, just so I could make this go so much easier. And then I've been hearing them all somewhat randomly, like not perfectly straight, just for a little extra visual interest, again with the foam tape. And I just, I love that sentiment, like according to my calculations, you're old totally a card I will send to someone. So did all that and then to adhere these to my card bases I'm just using Tombow Mono Multi this time because it gives me those few seconds of wiggle room so I can get these lined up perfectly on the card bases since they're the exact same size. Plus it's going to adhere this really really well because it is a bit warped from all the water coloring. So got both card fronts adhered to the bases and then for the first one I had already stamped and embossed the sentiment on the black cardstock again and then for the second card, I'm just going to stamp the happy birthday sentiment with that same VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And that finishes off both of my cards. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post with a link to the color challenge if you guys are interested in checking that out and playing along. It's open to everyone. We post a new one every single week. So I will have that info in my blog post as well as the pictures and links to all of this, the supplies used. And then here at the end of the video, I'm also going to have a link to my original Peerless Watercolor Organization video, how I do what I do, as well as the last little dinosaur card I'd made using these same watercolors. So you can click on those if you want to check them out. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys next time in a new video. Bye.